Yo, welcome back to the channel. The previous video that I made about Obsidian, a lot of you guys asked me about my theme and config and extensions that I use. And since then, it's been about two years since I've been using Obsidian. So I thought I'd make a two year update sharing the things I've learned, my current setup, and some tips if you're considering using Obsidian or any note taking app. Along with my config, I'll also share with you my favorite extensions and what I find Obsidian to be the most useful for. So I'll be giving you an inside look into my Obsidian vault. I've made some pretty cool upgrades to it. For example, it's now possible to have this really beautiful book view that looks like this, that you can click into any of your notes. And I've set it up so I can add any book with just one click. So I'll show you how I do that later in the video. I'm also completely unaffiliated and unsponsored with Obsidian. I just genuinely think it's a super powerful note-taking app if you're a student or if you just have a lot of notes and documents that you want to organize. But first, let me talk about why I use Obsidian if maybe you currently use a different note-taking app. I used to use Notion and Apple Notes, which are really powerful note-taking software, but the problem with that is that they have subscription fees and also locks you into an ecosystem. For most note-taking software, as you reach certain limits, you'll have to upgrade and pay a subscription fee to access and continue using the software which is kind of a sneaky thing that they do because you'd be locked into the note-taking software to begin with. Like that's happened to me before. But with Obsidian, as long as you have enough storage space on your computer, you don't have to pay anything. And they do have a subscription service and that is just if you want them to sync your notes across your different devices. But they also make it pretty easy for you to do yourself. Unlike basically all popular note-taking software, all of your notes are just in a folder on your computer, which seems pretty intuitive and seems pretty basic, but most note-taking software, your notes are actually stored on their servers, which means that if the internet goes down, you might not be able to access your notes, and if they get hacked, your notes might get leaked, which these things have happened to these companies before. I've seen some pretty concerning things on Reddit where people's Notion databases got deleted, or even recently, there was an outage with AWS and people weren't able to access their notes in that time. So when you use a note-taking app where you don't actually own your notes, you always have the risk of your notes being deleted, being leaked, or not being able to access them. Also with longevity, Obsidian is designed to outlast any note-taking software, including itself. All the notes are based on this file format called Markdown, which has been around pretty much since personal computers have been around, like at least over 20 years. So it's very likely that even if you decide to not use Obsidian one day, it's very easy for you to import your notes into a different software. But because they are Markdown, it's also very unlikely that you'll have to switch note-taking apps ever again, because it's basically just a glorified text editor. Searching for notes is also super fast and instant. Obsidian does not require an account to start using. You can just download it and create a note instantly. And there's no pop-ups, there's no major overhauls which completely change or break your notes. And I think that's actually a good thing because especially now you see a lot of companies add AI onto their existing products and there's no way for you to opt out of them. But with Obsidian, even the core features, you can just turn off in the settings pretty easily. But overall, I would say that the number one thing that makes Obsidian stand out over other note-taking apps is this unique feature called backlinks. So backlinks are a way for you to connect a note to another note, and that's how you end up with a graph that looks like this. The beauty with this is that over time, you can see how all your notes connect with each other. So it helps you understand and remember your notes better, but it also makes it so no matter how many notes you have in your vault, you can still see all your notes connected to each other. So they don't just get lost or buried somewhere. Later, when I get into my notes, I'll show you more of how this actually works. But personally, I really wish that I discovered this and started using this when I was a student because it would be amazing to see how all the different topics in my classes connected to each other. And also it would still be really useful today being out of college for over five years now that I can go back and look at the notes that's still relevant to my life today. I think the only thing missing with Obsidian is an easy way for you to review and remember the things that you've taken notes on. So for that, I use another app called Thea Study who is kindly sponsoring this video. So Thea Study is a new innovative study app powered with AI. If you're in school and you're studying for something, you can basically upload your textbook, notes, or slides, and it will create a study guide for you that optimizes your retention and reduces your study time. Even if you're just learning stuff from YouTube, you can paste in a YouTube link and it'll create a study guide to quiz you to make sure that you understand the concepts in the video pretty effectively. So one workflow that works really well with this is that you can upload your Obsidian note into Thea Study and you can generate quizzes or study guides. 
I've been using my free time to study some technical topics that I'm interested in, like with investing. And it's been super efficient. I just take a PDF or my notes, drag it in, and I can study straight from that. I also have my intern, Matt, who helps me out with some of the videos on this channel, try it out. And he also said that this app is super useful for studying for his finals. Unlike most AI power study tools, this isn't a cheating tool at all. It actually helps you learn the material rather than just giving you all the answers. You can choose from flashcards, study guides, multiple choice quizzes, and more. I got on a call with one of the team members of Thea and they have a pretty amazing story. The app was created by this kid in high school and they recently crossed over 2 million users. But what really stood out to me about this app and why I wanted to share this app in this video is that it's completely free to use. So there's literally only upside if you decide to try it out. You can use the link in the description or the link right here so that they know that I sent you. I think if I had Obsidian and Thea study when I was in college, this would have been insane. Especially since I did a double major in computer science and business, definitely would have been able to save hundreds of hours. But yeah, check out Thea study. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below and let's get back into the video. Now let's get into my Obsidian vault. This is what my Obsidian looks like when I open it. It just opens the daily page, which if you're not familiar with, every time you open up Obsidian, it makes a page with today's date. So you can add anything you want. So the theme that I use is called minimal and the font that I use is called SF Mono or Source Code Pro. I just kind of like this sort of um, IDE type look to my Obsidian, but you can also make it enter if you want something more similar to Notion or Apple Notes, you can make it look pretty similar. On the left sidebar, there's this extension I use that emulates what Apple Notes looks like. So Notebook Navigator is the extension that makes it have this Apple Notes look to it. I think Apple Notes has one of the more intuitive note-taking UIs, and this really brings that same UI to Obsidian. And I find it to be a lot easier to find notes rather than having them sorted in different folders. So now I don't really use any folders. I just have all my notes on the left sidebar that is in chronological order, and I open up notes directly just by searching for them. The second game-changing extension that I've started to use is this one called Obsidian Web Clipper. It's just a browser extension that I install, and when you come across an article or video you want to save or take notes on, you just click on it or use the keyboard shortcut, and it'll be added to your Obsidian Vault. And this is actually super powerful because you can create a custom template. So, for example, with YouTube videos, because I take a lot of notes with YouTube videos, I've set it up so that when I click on it, it'll create a new note with the video's title and the creator, and I can just take notes on it right below it. I use an extension called Thumbnails for the YouTube thumbnail, and there's also a way for you to add an LLM API if you want a summary of the video. In mine, when I click it, it writes a 250 character summary of what the video is about, so that in the future, when I look at the note, I can quickly understand a brief overview. So I'll share my config and template for this in the description if you want to do the same thing. But with Obsidian Web Clipper, I also use this for taking book notes. So if I come across a book that I'm reading or a book on the internet, I can quickly just search in Goodreads and then use a shortcut to add it to my Obsidian. And then later I can just add notes to it directly. Obsidian recently added a pretty useful feature, which are Obsidian databases. So you can organize and see all your book notes in one place. I've customized it to look like this, which is actually a style created by the CEO of Obsidian. So I also link this in my website if you want to use this. Another one that is really helpful is called Double Shift. Double Shift just makes it so when you hit Double Shift, you can look for or find an e-note. And so it makes it really easy to search for notes. The next extension is called Auto Template Trigger. So what this extension does is that when you make a new note, you can select from a few templates that you created and it will fill all those things out for you. I use this extension pretty much anytime I'm making a new note. So I can take notes about the meeting here. I can write down who I talked to and for how long. And with Obsidian Basis, it makes it easy for me to see all my meetings in one place. So because I take meeting notes, another natural thing to have are person notes. So I also use Obsidian like a Rolodex. So I have a person template where I can create a person note where I can see meetings that I've had with this person, or maybe it's an author or entrepreneur I'm learning from, and I can see notes that I've taken from their books or their videos. And it's just easy for me to reference in one place. The next plugin that I have found to be really helpful is called Various Compliments. All it does is when you're typing, it automatically will suggest different notes that you can link it to. So for example, if I'm in this daily note and I typed reread this book build, it automatically suggests a note that I have with that name and I can just click enter to link it. So that just makes it helpful to have backlinks in all of your notes on Obsidian. The last extension that I'll share in this video is a pretty unique one called Map View. So I started using this for restaurants where I would 
write down the things I ordered and what I thought of the restaurant and give it a sort of a rating. And it kind of became super helpful because there were restaurants that I would have a super long gap between going there and I could go back and see the things I ordered and avoid ordering the things that I didn't like or reorder the stuff that I liked. And also when I'm traveling somewhere, like when I went to New York or Japan, I can also capture the places and restaurants that I went to and take notes on those locations. One more thing that I find to be really useful with Obsidian, which is not really an extension, is I use it to keep track of different documents. It makes it really easy to just search for them using that double shift. For example, if I needed to find my driver's license, I can just type driver's license and I can see it right there. And so other things that I keep track of are like invoices, stuff related to lease documents or housing or uh, records of payments. And it makes it really easy to search stuff up. Before I use Obsidian, I would just have this somewhere in my photos or somewhere in my Apple Notes. And it would be kind of hard to pull stuff up really quickly. But if you're just starting out using Obsidian or any note taking app, one tip I would have is that just try to keep it simple and to reduce complexity. The setup that I have is not something that I started out and spent a lot of time to figure out the best system. It was kind of just trial and error. And I just added stuff as I needed to make it more organized. I never sat down and watched like an hour long video or a course on how to use Obsidian. And I don't think you should either. So just take this as some sort of food for thought or inspiration if this could be useful for you. If you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. I'll try to respond to every single comment. And if you enjoy this or you found this interesting, then uh, consider subscribing for more videos. I'm trying to post at least once every two weeks until the end of the year because I am moving. And so it is a little bit hard to keep to a weekly upload schedule. But yeah, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Let's get it.